I also have to apologize that uh, I didn't stick to my abstract. <laughs> I just take the second part of it. I was also too ambitious. Um, new photographic technologies have altered the way we see and led to significant changes in the status of the photographic image. The impact of photography on modes of perceiving reality and its role in making reality visible has changed extensively in recent years. A clear manifestation of this change can be seen in a comparison between two series of photographs, shots in museums, institutions where social authority is being acquired by controlling way of seeing. The first series is Thomas is Thomas Struth's known works from 1989 to 90 of visitors watching works of art in the museum. And there are a couple of them, um, but I'm sure that uh, you all know. Yes, OK. Um, sorry. The second series is a collection of photos shot, shot in recent years uh, that we've seen uh, yesterday, I think, uh, one example of this. Um, researches done recently show that the amount of time that people spend in front of a piece of art in museums have decreased dramatically within years. This change can be attributed to the fact that many people convert the act of looking at art with the act of photographing it due to the accessibility of digital cameras. Photography in this case does not only function as an extension of the memory and its complex manifestations as Barth has pointed out, but for most it function as an extension of the eye. People begin, begin to see through the camera, suspending the time of the gaze till its poten potential implementation. A totally different perspective of the change in the status of photography can be deduced from the following exa the example I'm going to talk on now. I've recently curated an exhibition of posters and films. Um, sorry, the wrong glasses. <laughs> uh, created by a group of Syrian activists who provide visual materials for the Syrian uprising from the very first uh, stages of the uprising. As part of a comprehensive research that I conducted for the exhibition, I interviewed many experts who could help me understand the complexity of the situation in Syria. Among them was a researcher who introduced me to another group of activists from a small village named Kafnar Bel in the northwest of Syria who use graphic materials in their demonstrations. Googling on this, uh, uh, Googling his name, I found out that the Syrian authorities claimed that he was working in the ser for the Israeli secret services as an agent helping the revolutionary groups to, to utilize social networks for the political and operational needs, uh, which he denied, of course. The visual materials from the village did not fit the exhibition I, I was curating, but some of the images which were distributed by them struck me strongly. I was fascinated by the way that they were photographs. And we can see, uh, oh sorry, yeah, and we can see some of them. Uh, I'll just... Uh, Okay. What we can see in the following photos are groups of men standing in front of the camera using the postures as though they were weapons. They're aware of the power of the camera for the transformation and communication of their political message. We will return to this, those photos at the end of my paper. The theoretical discourse surrounding the photographic image is closely bound to the cultural, cultural discourse concerning the concept of vision. 
stimulating multifaceted philosophical questions about the relation between vision and cognition. This dualism reaches back at least to ancient Greece in the connection expressed uh, by the word idea between a cognitive notion of the concepts of perception and optics. In French too, the etymological proximity of vision, knowledge, and power attest to the complexity of the concept of vision. In this paper, I claim that internet age mechanisms of photographic visuality are grounded in a new tie between mechanisms of vision, power, and knowledge. These ties break the connection between the visual appearance of the photograph and the representational meaning of the surface, thus allowing the performativity of the image. The shift in the status of the photographic image is a consequence of the direct link between the visibility of the photograph and co computerized forms for the articulation of metadata, online storage, and image retrieval options. Both media theories, Marshall McLuhan and photography theorist William Flusser, regarded the photographic medium, still in its analogical form, as the precursor of the information age and telematic society, where information and communication are tightly inter intertwined. Media researcher Lev Manovich continues this line of thought, addressing, continues this line of thought, so. Addressing new methods offered by digital technologies, he pointed to the direct link between photography and databases. In, the, in his 1998 article, Databases Symbolic Form, he argued that the digital age is characterized by an, ins an essential rift for, from, the, from its preceding age manifested mainly in the transition from linear perspective to a database perspective. Not only are the database and archive, its cultural derivative, cultural structures that morph in the face, the face of new technologies, they are also perceived as cognitive modes, not tools built solely for the preservation of information. Accordingly, they they represent the core essence of a new cultural condition. In his book, The Language of New Media, Manovich indicates a parallel development of media technologies originating in photography and information technology emerging from computerized systems. He claims that, they, that as they mature, these technologies merge via the computer to unite as one technology. He singles out two central moments of this occurrence. One in the late 1830s with the discovery of photography and Charles Babbage's invention of the analytical machine which laid the logical foundation for computers developed a century later. The other in the 1890s with the invention of the cinema a few years after Herman Hollerith designed a data processing machine used by the United States government for its population census. Actually, this was the beginning of the IBM company. The current juxtaposition of these technologies is expressed not only in the possibility of their coexistence in different apparatuses simultaneously, but rather in their integration assimilated in various applications. This proximity seems to place the visual in new territories and so enhance the deep cultural con connotations involved in it. The visual is now part of information. As such, it can be archived in databases and continue to inform the cognitive space. In On Photography, uh, Susan Sontag draws attention to the double function embodied in the photographic medium itself. According to Sontag, the assumption that every object in the world can serve as a photographic matter stems from the manner by which cameras define reality in two ways crucial for the functioning 
of advanced technological societies, a, spect a spectacle for the masses and is controlling object by establishing governmental, data establishing governmental databases. Although access to database had, has witnessed radical transformation in recent years, the validity of sound exposition can be discerned in major aspects of civil life in democratic society. That said, the controlling function does not only exist in relation to, to governing authorities, but expands its reach in, co in corporate giants controlling the information space. This is seen clearly in the practical conduct of Google. Of Google. Starting out as a text-based algorithm search engine operating in virtual space, Google is currently inventing multiple resources in developing and producing photographic technology for the integration of media, uh, sorry, in action. I'll repeat it, sorry. Um, Google is currently invest investing multiple resources in developing and producing photographic technologies in actual space. These technologies serve as the foundation for the integration of media technologies in textual databases and can be seen in uh, projects like uh, Google Earth, uh, Google Street View, and the Google Art Project. Google's mission, as defined by the company, is to, orga is to organize world data and make them accessible and usable to and by all. That's a quotation. In the context of visuality, this could be defined at the big picture of the world, or in virilio terms, grand scale optics. Google represents a new type of spatial do domination occur occurring on a global scale. The ability to represent space with photographic media serves as a tool allowing the company to strengthen its control over global databases and so enhance its power. Other recent Google developments also incorporate photographic functions with data processing utilities, absorbing the one into the other. New Google projects in different stages of development, such, of course, as the augmented reality glasses, indicate the reinforcements of this tendency in the future. The vision machines designed by Google in recent years illustrate Flusser's view. In the 1980s, Flusser refused to accept the notion of photography, uh, the notion that photography is a representational act, arguing instead that it should be regarded as a conceptual practice, principally one that translates codes or recodes reality. In his, in his book, Towards a Philosophy of Photography, Flusser argues that, photog that photography signifies an important hierarchical shift in post-industrial societies, pri primarily a transition to categories of information. According to Flusser, the photographic apparatus has a symbolic function creating simulations of thought. The various possibilities facilitating the conditions for the production of photographic images are not in the actuality of the world, but are programmed camera functions distinctly different from regarding the photographic apparatus as a tool or machine. Although Flusser's writings on the photographic apparatus predate modern digital technologies and their ramifications and impact on the photographic field, his ideas are influential in the critique of visual representation platforms of captured reality, such as those de developed by Google. Following Flusser, it can be argued that Google's photographic devices for spatial imagery are designed to construct it anew. They create a second and third visual order, vision mediated through means, affecting the way space is represented. Uh, automatically, oh sorry. Automatically driven cars, carrying cameras equipped with automated vision devices, multi-camera, uh, 
sorry, multi-camera photographic machines creating parametric 360 angle, angled views, software integrating the photographs produced by the cameras, and an interface navigating between the captured space and other representational apparatuses, visual and textual, of the same aspect, sorry, of the same space, is also between the represented space and Google's main database. Thus, the photographic image, image, images not only exist autonomously, they are an essential segment of a comprehensive database in which text and image function as different layers of a complex data structure. In semiotic terms, the database must be must be seen as a textual structure. Distinctively, textual systems like naming, categorizing, tagging, or labeling visual documents with keywords, as well as automatic systems of computer vision and artificial intelligence, are all based on applying textual systems, algorithms, to the image. Much has, much has been written on the effect of the Google search algorithms wording and the level of visibility of certain sites compared with others. In other words, the primacy they enjoy in search results and about the manip manipulative site-promoting methods that arise as a result. The level of connectivity of one site to, in relation to another based on a specific web structure on which the Google search er engine is built determined its visibility regardless of its cultural or ethical relevance. In many cases, the priority granted to certain sites derive from economic, economic and political factors. Jacques Rancier points at the connection between mechanisms of visuality and political systems and offers tools to think about the meaning of the photographic act in an age experiencing a change in the visuality of photographic, pho photographic images. In the aesthetic arena, claims Rancière, it has become impossible to treat only the mechanism through which a single viewer perceives the image. Hence, it must be interpreted in a much wider context, deriving from new methods of image creation distribution, storage options, and accessibility. When Sears sees the aesthetic practice, practices, including photography, as political, because they serve as a central factor for distribution of the sensible, words, according to Rancier, not only determine what images must do, but also have the power to act politically when they can influence the possible modes of perception that regulate, that regulate the role division and methods of participation, participation in a social cooperative world. Sensual division differentiate the visible from the invisible, the uttered from the suppressed, and the heard from the silent. He maintained that the image no longer exists as a category because the distance differentiating it from reality is now lost. Therefore, images must be thought of in relation of the act they perform. In the current situation, when basic practices of granting visibility to images are dependent upon technologies of distribution, storage data retrieval in personal and public spaces, it can be claimed that Rancière's notion of visibility and invisibility are tied directly to search en engine politics. Search engine politics. Sorry. Representation is no longer significant. What gains importance are the modes and methods that enable Im an image an image's visibility. Obstensive, obstensibly, the state in which everything is photographed can be seen as another expression of the cultural visual turn as interpreted by theorists Giddy Board, Jean Baudrillard, W. J. T. Mitchell, and others. In the early 1990s, Mitchell argued the total dominance of the visual turn over the preceding theories gathered, gathered un, under the concept of 
the linguistic turn. An important aspect of the centrality of the visual is, a, is the sp spatialization of data that has been occurring in recent years, as in Google's spatial visual visualization applications. Those applications producing spatial visual representations can be taken as an alternative to the textual interfaces that preceded them, and as such, an, an enforcement of the same inc inclination. Yet, at the same time, they can be regarded as the exact opposite. In light of the fact that the, that the spatial database interface assigns a system of visual representation to semiotic structures, themselves grounded in textual readings of mechan mechanisms of visual spatial representations. Although this procedure is organized in visual forms, it also functions as a defined semiotic stru structure, returning space, in returning space its textual dimensions. In the Google Art project, an interface that around, well, uh, sorry, in the Google Art project, an interface that allows viewers to wander virtually through 3D simulations of major museums around the world, this process is expressed otherwise. The images documented as part of this project are transformed into di digital photographs, but also into something resembling text. The platform is built on a deconstructive structure or, um, okay, encouraging individual user to fragment space by dividing it into the most uh, basic uh, components. Uh, in this case, uh, maybe we could say uh, fractalize and not fra fragmentize. I think it was, uh, uh, I think I would use it. <laughs> Um, okay, this subjective reconstruction, as we can see, um, is a sim simulation of the curatorial practice operating within the Google Art Project framework. Thus, it can be argued that not only has the expansion of Google's database hampered the visual term, it has actually served to fragment it while sti simultaneously uh, marking a new process. One cementing an unprecedented unpre link between photographic image, images and texts. Hence, the photographic image is essentially conditioned by processes of textualization via photography. The act of tagging, I'm almost finished, so I'm almost done. <laughs> the act of tagging through which images are giving textual markers has become a major fa facet in the rebuilding of the photographic image. Tagging is closely connected to the inseparable link between the image and the met metadata terms. In digital photography, the inseparability of images and tag image of text is structural. This structure is what generates the image dynamics, which is conditioned by the bond between aspects of visuality and the power of knowledge mechanisms inherent in database logics. And in database logics. If the database is the new symbolic form of the current age, replacing the visual regime of the perspective, then the textualization of the digital image can be perceived as an expression of this paradigmatic shift. By creating new modes of seeing images, new technologies enable the constitution of the visibility as a dynamic act. As I've shown, this visibility is grounded in textual systems. Through these systems, digital image amalg amalgamate with databases in a way that brings forth their political, social, economical, and cultural contexts. Back to the photo from the Syrian uprising. Typing Carfnabel on Google image search engine would lead immediately to a large amount of photos with images of the posters. The people of Carfnabel know that in order to be visible, they have to include the tagging for the images 
on the photo itself. So simple and so effective. Thank you. Thank you.